Right now, I'm seeing a lot of new investors take aim at REITs because they are priced at historically low valuations and offer high dividend yields. Most investors understand that the best time to invest is right after a crash when prices are low, and this is exactly the case of the REIT sector today. But before you rush and buy just any REIT, I want you to take a step back and recognize that not all glitter is gold. Some REITs are very opportunistic, but then some others could be very risky and lead to very significant losses. The REIT sector is vast and versatile with over 200 companies and this is a sector in which you want to be very selective because there are very large differences from one REIT to another. Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. I've been doing this for over 10 years. And in today's video, I want to give you some tips on how to avoid painful losses when investing in REITs. I'm gonna share with you five mistakes that I see new investors commonly make when buying REITs. So make sure to stick till the very end because this is going to help you improve your investment performance. But before I get into it, I want to remind you that the two week free trial for my REIT newsletter, Hired Landlord is still active. So if you want to access my entire real money REIT portfolio, feel free to click the first link in the description of this video. So here are five mistakes that you should avoid at all costs when investing in REITs. The first mistake that a lot of investors, including even sophisticated ones, make is that they will ignore or at least underappreciate the impact of CapEx. CapEx is the cost that's required to maintain properties and keep them in good shape. In some property sectors, it's very low. In some others, it can be a lot higher. And importantly, it can also vary very significantly over time. The issue here is that most of the metrics that you see on Seeking Alpha or on some stock screeners for REITs, they are not adjusted for CapEx. And as a result, investors will commonly think that the REIT is cheaper than it really is. They will also think that the dividend is safer than it actually is. And in many cases, they will also think that the balance sheet is safer than it actually is. One of my biggest investment mistakes of all time was buying a REIT called CBL and Associates. I filmed a separate video on this topic. I'll put a link somewhere in the description of this video. But in short, I overlooked the impact of CapEx, which was very important in the case of CBL because it owned a portfolio of class B malls. It had to very heavily reinvest in its properties to keep them desirable for tenants. And this eventually led to a dividend cut and a bankruptcy. I lost about 90% of my capital on this investment. So it was a pretty costly lesson. Unfortunately, I'm seeing today a lot of new investors make the same mistake by buying a lot of office REITs. The valuations are very low. Dividend yields are very high. But I think they're really underappreciating the impact that CapEx will have on these REITs in the coming years. CapEx is already quite high in the office sector and I think that it's going to grow very significantly in the coming years and therefore today's cash flow could be overstated. This also means that the dividend payout ratios are quite a bit more aggressive than it may seem and the leverage is also a lot higher than it looks like on the surface. Then the second mistake is that investors will typically assume that most REITs are well managed. People come to this conclusion because it's very tough to become the CEO of a publicly listed REIT and as a result they assume that they will be very skillful and they will be well aligned with shareholders. But unfortunately, this isn't the case at all. There are some REITs that are really well managed with the shareholders' best interests at heart. And then there are some other REITs that are really just looking out for the best interests of the manager. Here, a good example that I could give you is Industrial Logistics Properties Trust versus East Group Properties. Both REITs invest in industrial properties and yet their performance has been day and night over the past years. Here on the chart, you'll see that East Group Properties has delivered very attractive total returns and this is because it's really well managed. And on the flip side of things, Industrial Logistics Properties Trust has lost a lot of capital to its shareholders. And this is really just because the REIT is poorly managed, it has consistently issued a lot of shares, deluded shareholders, made poor acquisitions, and as a result, they are today paying the price. Back in 2017, I did an academic study in which I interviewed a bunch of professional REIT investors. And the conclusion of this study was that the number one most important criteria for selecting REITs should be the management. So please Please don't overlook this factor when selecting REITs. It's even more important than the quality of the properties, the leverage, or even the dividend payout ratio. Before I go into the next mistake, could you please do me a favor and like this video? That really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for your support. Then the third mistake is investing in mortgage REITs instead of equity REITs because they offer much higher dividend yields. Mortgage REITs are those that invest in loans and debt instruments. Equity REITs on the flip side are your traditional REITs that invest in properties. In most cases, the mortgage 
mortgage rates will offer much higher dividend yields because they take on a lot more leverage. However, if you look back over the past few decades, you'll see that their total returns, including their dividends, have actually been really poor over time. I think that this is because the business of mortgage rates is very dependent on macro factors like interest rates and spreads, which are almost impossible to predict. So the lesson here should be that a high dividend yield doesn't equal to high total returns and you shouldn't favor mortgage rates just because they offer these higher dividend yields. On the contrary, I think that the majority of mortgage rates are uninvestable because their businesses are broken in a sense, they are too reliant on macro factors that are unpredictable and therefore I think that you'll be better off buying equity rates in most cases. Then the fourth mistake is that investors will fall in love with a specific rate and invest too much in it. A good recent example of this is a rate called Medical Properties Trust. From writing a lot of articles on Seeking Alpha, I know that a lot of investors have very heavily invested in this REIT because valuation is low and its dividend yield is high. However, the REIT, just like every other REIT and every other company, has some risks and unfortunately for them, the risk factors have played out here. Some of its tenants have not been able to pay their rent. This recently forced the REIT to cut its dividend and as a result, the share price is down very significantly. It's a good example of why you shouldn't invest too much in one specific REIT. You cannot avoid all risks. Sometimes risk factors will play out, you will suffer losses and the only way to protect yourself from this is to diversify. At High Yield Landlord, my REIT newsletter, we hold 24 REITs in our core portfolio to mitigate this risk and so despite being invested in medical properties trust and suffering some losses there, these losses really aren't that significant because our position only represents about 3% of the portfolio. I think that most investors should probably seek to own anywhere between 15 and 25 REITs because this will mitigate risks all while still maintaining a relatively high exposure to their favorite ideas. And then the fifth and final mistake is to inure foreign markets and to only invest in American REITs. The American REITs is the oldest and by far the biggest in the world. However, today there are REITs in over 30 countries. And in many cases, the opportunities are even better abroad. And then on top of that, by including some foreign REITs in your portfolio, you will better diversify it and reduce risks. To give you an example, recently on this channel, I highlighted a British REIT called Big Yellow Group. This is a self-storage REIT that's capitalizing on the undersupply of storage properties in Europe. And I think that's far more opportunistic than its peers in the US. I think that missing on these foreign opportunities will lower your returns and increase your risks because you will be less diversified and you won't participate in the upside of these up and coming REITs. Now, if you want to access my entire REIT portfolio, feel free to join my REIT newsletter, High Yield Landlord for a two week free trial. I'll put a link somewhere in the description of this video. As I've said before, this is no commitment free trial, so you won't be charged anything in the first 14 days. So if you want to come just for the free trial, that's perfectly fine. And finally, if you could please like the video, that would really help me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for all your support and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.